Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism and narcissistic relationships and toxic people in general. So let's talk about something that is, you know, sometimes people wonder, are there people out there that kind of are narcissist whisperers who are able to, you know, to, to get past them, to not let it bring them down? It's an interesting question, and I have another video that I made about are some people immune to narcissists. That's a very different phenomenon than what I'm about to talk about, okay? I think some people out there are actually really, for a variety of reasons, not that affected by narcissists, and I get into all that in that video. I'm going to be talking about something very different here, which is what happens when a narcissist encounters an authentic person. Now that's where it gets really, really interesting. So let's talk a little bit about what authenticity is because I think it's a word that's very overused and even a lot of people, I have no doubt that many of you are going to disagree with my definition and, I'm, and that's fine, you know, I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, but authenticity is very much a person who lives in alignment with their meaning, with their purpose, with a, um, with a sense of self-awareness with an accurate appraisal of their strengths and their weaknesses, and yet don't allow the strengths to escalate them into grandiosity and don't let the perceived weaknesses allow them to fall into a pit of despair. They tend to be relatively well emotionally regulated, and in fact, very well emotionally regulated, however, are able to engage in appropriate and vulnerable shows of emotion. So basically, they're very self-possessed people. Oftentimes they present as quite serene, I guess, because they're good. They're good. Authentic people are interesting because stuff doesn't tend to get under their skin as much because they're kind, they're good. Like they're not necessarily rich. They're not necessarily at the top of their game. They're just sort of authentic. And I, and I've done another video on authenticity in general. And I've met, I mean, I can think of one gentleman in particular I met once and the nature of his work is just incredibly authentic. It was very peaceful to be in his presence. And it was, he was just really aligned with his meaning and purpose and he was at peace. Now what happens when that encounters narcissism? Okay. Man or woman like that. It's very, very interesting because at one level, authentic people are pretty unflappable. Things don't really get to them because as a rule, people who are very authentic don't tend to personalize stuff very much, right? They'll say, that's a fair criticism or yeah, that's, you know, that's a lot of noise that person's making, um, but they don't make it like, what did I say? What did I do? Like there's not as much of that because they're able to say, they might have even had, and again, one thing I want to make clear is they might have even had very difficult lives. Like authentic people aren't just people walking around the world never having had, had trauma or difficulty in their lives. Sometimes they've experienced tremendous difficulty in their lives and they just keep going. And so they have, you know, they'll even say like, mm, this is probably not a good place for me to be because there's a lot of loud noises. And I know that can be, you know, that can really actually, I, I don't experience that well. So I think I'm just going to actually absent myself from the situation. And they don't care too much what other people would think. They let that vulnerability be expressed and they don't worry about how it'll be judged. So again, that's what I mean by that very self-possessed sense. So when they encounter a narcissist, it gets really, really interesting because not only does it not get under their skin, they kind of don't fall for it, right? So they are, there's a wisdom there. And so what I've seen authentic people in the face of narcissistic people, narcissistic people get very frustrated in the presence of authentic people because their usual tricks don't work as well. So the authentic person might say, oh, wow, that's a very nice car you have. Um, then they'll just kind of go back to like, they won't let someone be interrupted. Like, so let's say they're having a conversation and they're having a conversation with person A and person C is narcissistic and person C tries to interrupt and make it about their car. The, the authentic person won't say, shut up. You know, they won't get rude. They'll say, it sounds like a very nice car. And then they'll make sure person B is still going. So what happens is, is that in some ways, an authentic person is a little bit more resistant to the validation seeking behavior, to the love bomby behavior, to the attention seeking behavior. But what's really neat about the authentic people 
is they won't shame the narcissist. They won't feel the need to say like, you need to shut up. You need to step off. You're making too much noise. What is wrong with you? They won't go there. They'll just keep steering things where they need to go. But where people who are authentic will ultimately often hit a home run is that they'll know when to step away and they won't be rude about it. They'll say something like, oh, you know, look at the time. I do need to go. I didn't, you know, I, I have a, many, many things to get home to take care of. And I can't thank you all so much for this experience. Da, 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 da. Those who do it very graciously. Okay. They may, they, they're in tune with themselves enough to know this doesn't feel good. Now, where this gets tricky and why authentic people are kind of like the rock stars amongst us is sometimes we don't want to do that. We don't want to be the one to step away because we don't want to be the one who's sort of um, seen as like the party pooper, the person who's leaving too early or something like that. And we don't want to have to explain ourselves. And an authentic person will still be able to say, oh, you know, I wasn't feeling comfortable this evening, so I think it's just better I go. I don't want to harm what's going on here. I don't want to interfere with the evening, but I thank you so much. I'm having a wonderful time. They speak truth, okay? And as I said, speaking truth, being transparent with truth, is often sort of what makes you the narcissist slayer. Because once you do that, you've really, um, that you've taken away their game. You really have. And authenticity though requires us to do a lot of work, right? We've got to care a lot less about what other people think and what other people say. We've got to be good with us. And that's what authentic people have. I got to tell you, most authentic people I have met have been older than like 55 or 60. They do tend to be a little older. And I think that maybe they've just done the hard yards of life and they're coming out the other side and saying, okay, I got this. And like I said, many of them did not have easy lives, but there's a serenity and they don't suffer fools, but they don't do it in a nasty, cruel way. Authentic people aren't always super gossipy. Like that, you know, a little bit, but nothing like they really are just sort of, it's not my fight, it's not my problem. Um, but they won't actively enable. So the authentic person will probably leave the situation rather than continuing to listen to a narcissistic person foolishly holding court. It's, a, it's again, it's a very, very, in, in a humanistic model, to be authentic is sort of to be at the top of the mountain, you know, to have reached that sort of self-actualized point where you're living in congruence with who you are. I can say that there are people out there who are authentic, who actually have had narcissistic relationships. That's been part of their history. So it's not as though they've sort of blithely walked through life like the Dalai Lama, not being affected by anyone. It's, it is that they've integrated those lessons, they've learned those lessons, they've done the work, and they started sort of pushing away these sorts of expectations that other people have. And a lot of times those expectations result in enabling narcissists. So that ability to feel solid enough in yourself, comfortable enough in yourself to say, you know, this may not be working for me, and then to gracefully step away is the, the authentic person's, I guess, weapon, for lack of a better term, in terms of handling the narcissist. When a narcissist is with an authentic person, they'll often have a lot of bad things to say about them. What was wrong with that guy? What was wrong with that girl? I mean, my gosh, is God snobby much or standoffish? What was their problem? They're not very social. Be very contemptuous, very dismissive. There's something unsettling when the narcissist encounters an authentic person. Those of you who are truth tellers will understand this better than anyone else. Especially if you were a truth teller as a child, at some level, you were able to see right through to the inside of your narcissistic parent and your narcissistic parent knew that and they got really uncomfortable with you, which is why truth tellers often become scapegoated as adults. When you're authentic, that happens again, that the authentic person can see right through to the narcissistic adult in their midst. And that narcissistic adult doesn't like it. They will often try to insult the authentic person, speak badly about them behind their back, make fun of them, mock them, and really try to avoid seeing them in the future. What's fascinating is while the narcissist will often waste lots of time trying to win other people over, right? Because they're so insecure and they need the supply. There's something about authentic people that almost scare narcissists. And you'll see that they probably won't try to win them over. I think what a lot of people forget is that narcissists go through, 
they go through people looking for those who will be the best sources of supply before they hold on to them. So by the time they got to you, they probably tried it out with other people and their tricks may or may not have worked. But they often don't try to keep try, uh, pull the authentic person in because there's a really unsettled feeling for the narcissistic individual who's in the face of that authentic person. So you might be thinking, well, then it sounds like the ultimate narcissist repellent might be to get really authentic. You damn well better believe it is. But that's easier said than done, isn't it? We all struggle in that journey. I can speak for myself. It's, I never find it to be an easy journey. I think that we all have, we have psychological demons to sort of slay before we can get there to that full sort of settled place. And I can easily see as I get older how much that's associated with age. But it's a good goal for all of us. To, be, to live in sync with who we are, not with what we believe the demands of the world expect of us. To know who we are, what we stand for, what our meaning is, what our purpose is, and live with that as much as we can day after day. And when we can do that, even when we have to do something uncomfortable, and let's face it, go to work, there's things you don't wanna do, you can still live in line with that. The more authentic you become, the more resistant you will be to narcissists. And frankly, the more the narcissists, they're definitely going to have a few choice words for you and tell you to sort of take a hike. They'll definitely speak badly about you behind your back. But if you're authentic enough, you won't care. So go out there and get your authentic on. Work on it. It's a very, very worthy journey. And that's my wish for all of us is that we do get there. Thanks again for tuning in. Please subscribe. Join this community. Learn how to be more authentic in the face of narcissists. It's hard to do and I look forward to seeing you next time.